the mission of the 16th Sustainment Brigade is very, uh, very busy. Every day I wake up excited to get out there and plan logistics. I mean, I honestly believe there's no better place to lead a soldier than Europe. Being in Europe is what I will consider for logistics is the leadership laboratory because we have an opportunity for soldiers and, and young leaders to come and develop. The ability to work with allies and to have leadership opportunities and the, you know, readiness, the chief staff of the Army's number one priority. I mean, you're constantly measuring your readiness and testing your readiness. The collective energy and the ability to execute our craft on a daily basis in a complex, ambiguous, uncertain environment. Um, you take the Army operating concept and you look at it and we're executing it every single day. But over the past year, there's been 51 battalion level and above exercises across Europe. We focus on Atlantic Resolve plus Ukraine, which is really Eastern Europe, focused on assuring our allies and deterring Russian aggression. I was able to take the broad requirements uh, with the regionally uh, allocated forces in uh, late 2014 and link the heavy vehicle requirements, track vehicles, uh, M1s, Abrams, uh, et cetera, um, and realize that they needed fuel, transportation, repair parts, movement, so we established capability and capacity in, uh, in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, and Poland. Uh, to receive repair parts, conduct transportation operations, uh, store bulk fuel, transport bulk fuel, um, and manage movement control efforts across that region. And we've since extended that into the south uh, in Bulgaria and Romania and Hungary. I would say most of the tasks that we do out in Atlantic Resolve really revolve around distribution and movement, providing freedom of movement and operational reach to the formations that are forward and to our allies. Probably the biggest impact one, the really that gives operational reach and operational access to the maneuver forces, is movement control, though. And what movement control does is anytime uh, there is a theater opening or a border crossing, uh, there are movement control personnel there directing traffic uh, uh, with the ships getting help pulling stuff off the of ships uh, at border crossings. Anytime a truck goes across the border, there has to be uh, an 88 November there coordinating. Uh, the diplomatic clearances. It takes, it, it takes a lot of planning with the movement control, but they have the, the theater opening mission. Our average convoy moving in Europe will cross four, four sovereign nations just to get to the end destination. I always use the example of our soldiers carry five or six kinds of currency in their pockets because they might be in Poland one day, Czech Republic the next, and then going through Hungary and into uh, Romania or Bulgaria to deliver supplies. We're, we're very successful at it because we've been doing it for, for quite a while, and the more, the more we do it, the more efficient we become at it, so it's almost like a muscle memory. Our junior leaders do things that uh, is not typical of junior leaders for their, their time and experience in, in, in the Army. For example, we have sergeants and staff sergeants and lieutenants driving 1,500-mile convoys, uh, com commanding convoys, going through um, multiple countries, five or six, uh, crossing four or five borders, you know, carrying fuel or or missiles, and when you have such junior leaders, you have to trust them that they're gonna make the right decisions. And uh, it's not uncommon for us to have a, a sergeant sitting in an embassy, you know, per advising an ambassador and his staff on freedom of movement in that country. And when there's friction points, it is that sergeant who deconflicts it between the country and U.S. forces. So we have a great opportunity to develop very junior leaders and soldiers in environments they may not have imagined themselves in. And they, they understand the impact that they play uh, and, and the cruciality of supporting the regionally allocated forces that come over to support, uh, support U.S. Army Europe and, and our exercises in Atlantic Resolve. Uh, and so uh, really at the, at the juniors levels, uh, I've got folks that are uh, impacting missions at, at operational strategic levels uh, that I, even as a, as a young lieutenant uh, in Afghanistan, didn't, didn't have a concept or, or have the opportunity to do. We had a lieutenant and her platoon down in supporting Trident Juncture in Spain, Portugal, and Italy doing the fueling operations. Well, Lieutenant Hassenfluss, um, part of the 515th Transportation Company, and she, um, she took a convoy, you know, a young lieutenant took a convoy, and they moved from Germany to France, and they linked up with the French forces, and they did this, you know, multinational convoy down to Spain. Now they're doing a risk assessment. We do risk assessments for all operations. Lieutenant's putting it together with her staff sergeant, platoon sergeant, and they're finishing up, and the French commander comes over. What's that? It's a risk assessment. You know, we're making sure we're doing safe operations. This is great. We're going to incorporate this into NATO doctrine. Now, the lieutenant didn't think she's telling me about it. Ah, it's cool. They're going to whatever. I said, do you realize that you just produced a product that 28 nations are going to use 
as a basis for how they do risk assessments for fuel operations. Pretty significant impact from a first lieutenant and a staff sergeant out there on the battlefield. We, we can actually see the success at the end of the day or at the end of the week or at the end of the mission, whatever it is we're involved in. Uh, very accomplished, you know, when the exercise is complete and we've seen how we had an effect, how we affected the overall mission. I think Atlantic Resolve has helped us bring much more relevance to the Sustain Brigade and the training opportunities, the ability to build readiness, consume readiness, and understand and visualize where we're at in operations. Uh, I, I don't believe there's a better place in the Army to be a soldier or a logistician than in strong Europe right now, uh, today. To assure our NATO allies and partner nations and deter Russian aggression. As I said, the American flag means freedom around the globe. You put an American flag, a soldier wearing it on their sleeve, in any one of these countries, and the citizens of that country know that the United States is there standing next to them. The Army's business is people and, it, you know, and readiness, right? Readiness of people and equipment. And the 16th Sustainment Brigade provides that. I mean, we feed, fuel, fix, um, support the force, and we provide operational reach you know, so they can go as far as they need to go, and freedom of movement so they can go where they need to go, and really that's, that's how we sustain a strong Europe.